The lute, also known as the coolest instrument ever, raises a lot of questions. We already covered some information about its origins and development, as well as the differences between the European lute and the Eastern oud. But the lute has many other secrets that I'm going to share with you right now. A very generalized misconception that we need to get off the way right now. Many people have this idea that the lute for some reason is like super rare, super difficult to play and somehow not for everyone. This is very far from the truth, actually anyone can play the lute. It is not particularly more difficult than learning the guitar or the piano for example. Of course that unfortunately not everyone can afford studying music, but if you do you might also be able to afford playing the lute. All you need is an instrument and a teacher. Not even the instrument is indispensable for learning the basics and the repertoire. I actually have many students that take lute lessons for years with a regular guitar with lute tuning until they're confident enough to buy the actual instrument. This brings us to another common question that is, why are lutes so expensive? You might think that lutes are expensive if you compare them to plastic recorders, digital keyboards or mass production guitars. But the price range of a lute is not at all different from the price for guitars or violins built by artisans. The alleged higher price of lutes is not actually a characteristic of the instrument, but of the form of production. Just imagine if I bought a cardboard lute for $10 and then got mad when I saw $200 guitars in music stores and said, oh my god, guitars are so much more expensive than lutes, what a theft. Now that we made this clear, I think that the most common question I get is about the number of strings and the tuning. There are many types of lutes and each one has its own characteristic tuning. We will definitely cover them in another video, but the most famous one, the Renaissance lute, is tuned from high to low G, D, A, F, C, G. This means that if you lower your guitar's third string to a G flat and put a capo on the third fret, voila, you get the lute tuning. However, unlike the guitar, lutes usually have double strings we call courses, similar to the 12 string guitar or the mandolin. The first course is single and the others are double, some tuned in unisons, others in octaves. As lutes developed, they got more and more courses, up to 14, like this arch lute here. And this brings us to another question I get a lot, that is, how do you play the floating strings that we actually call diapasons? I'm not sure why people get so confused about it, considering it's just the same thing as harp strings, for example. They are tuned diatonically, so we always play them open, there's no need to reach them with the left hand. A usual misconception is that they're sympathetic strings. Of course they add resonance, but they're just regular strings. So what are lutes made of? The soundboard is made of soft wood such as Swiss pine or spruce, and harder woods are best for the rest of the body, usually rosewood, maple, sycamore, walnut or others. Ebony is very popular for the fingerboard as it gives a very nice black finish. Other materials might be added as ornaments such as ivory inlays, and even though the rosettes of lutes are usually made of the same wood as a soundboard, baroque guitar rosettes are usually made of parchment. On a side note, no, the rosette has no real utility in sound production or timber, it's just pretty. It's a cultural thing, they appear consistently in surviving lutes, in paintings. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like and consider supporting the channel. Many people are curious about the use of the lutes in current music. Of course that lutenists are most often than not interested in historical performance, just as you might expect saxophone players to be into jazz. But period instruments are instruments like any other and can be used to make any kind of music.
Musicians often ask me what is the clef we use for lute music. Of course we use the F clef for reading continuo, just like the harpsichord does, but actually lute solos are consistently written in historical tablature. If you don't know what tablature means, while sheet music tells us which notes to play, tablatures are systems that indicate physical positions. For example, you may already know and use guitar taps. In the case of lutes and guitars, tablature will tell us which strings to play and which frets to press at each time, and the French lute tablature is basically the same thing. The first line represents the first string, and the sixth line is the sixth string, and the sixth and the sixth sixth sixth. And the sixth line is the sixth string. But instead of numbers, letters are used to represent frets. A is open string, B is first fret, C is second fret, and so on. The Italian tablature, on the other hand, uses numbers to represent frets, like the modern tab. Zero is open, one is first, second is second, you know how it goes. But the strings are upside down from what we are used to. The first line is the sixth string, and the sixth... Why does this word exist? The sixth line is the first string. Unlike modern tabs, however, the lute always has rhythm notation. The duration of the notes is always written above the staff. So, to get a better grasp of what the lute is, let's compare it to something that most of us are familiar with, the modern guitar. The lute is much lighter than the guitar, People are actually kind of freaked out when they first take a lute in their hands. Guitars usually weigh around 3.5 kilos, while Renaissance lutes weigh around 600 grams, so it's a huge difference. The strings are also much lighter. Each lute string has between 2.5 and, and 4 kilos of tension, while the tension of modern guitar strings goes from around 8 up to 20 kilos each. This means your fingers need to exert much less strength to achieve the optimal sound, so the overall feeling of playing the lute is much lighter. As a consequence, the volume produced by a lute is also considerably lower. Having less string tension and double strings means that playing without nails is normally considered more efficient. Unlike standard classical guitar technique that advocates for long right-hand nails. As you can see, the pegs are not geared like in a modern guitar, they are wooden friction pegs, more like in a violin or cello. So yeah, tuning a lute is a little bit of a hell, but we really do get used to it, on the long run it's not a bother. I actually feel that tuning is a little bit of a me time, it's like a meditative experience. <laughs> As you know, in a modern guitar the frets are fixed and made of metal, but as already explained in the previous video, the frets and strings of lutes and early guitars are made of gut or synthetic materials like nylon and nylgut. So go check it out next. Bye guys! See you later!